Okay. Uh, good afternoon to you all. I'm very pleased to welcome you all to this special seminar, which is streaming live on Facebook. I'm Goma Pradhan pursuing master's in biology at Prince of Songla University. It is an honor for me to introduce to you all our speaker for the day, Dr. Patamarak Engson Tia. Over the years, Dr. Patamarak has published so many research paper and his field of interest lies in insect molecular biology, insect camera reception, molecular basis of insect behavior, insect pest management, transgenic insect, comparative genomic and molecular evolution. Today, the topic of the seminar is recent advances in the molecular basis of insect camera reception, how to fight, how to fight mosquitoes and insect pests. I would like to request the viewers to kindly post your questions in the comment section if you have any. Now, without any further delay, let me welcome Dr. Patamara to kindly start his presentation. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Goma, and thank you for the opportunity. Okay, uh, my talk today is about uh, some recent advance in the field of insect molecular, uh, uh, insect molecular, <laughs> molecular basis of insect chemoreception. Okay, okay. I, I, I'd like to start my talk by talking about the importance of insects. Okay, some of them are deadly uh, disease vector. Okay, many mosquito species cause disease like dengue, Zika, malaria, and the problem is worldwide. Okay, some of them are important agricultural pests. For example, in this picture, it is the uh, rice field that's affected by the plant hopper. Okay, so th they are the reason why we have to use insecticide, the, the nasty chemical that can cause cancer and very bad for environment. So we have to think about a better way to deal with insects. One way is to use uh, insect repellents. Okay, this chemical can save millions of lives. Okay, if we can protect ourselves from mosquito, we, we, we can be safe from many diseases. Okay, and it is safer than insecticide. There are many brands in the market selling uh, insect repellent, but the chemical compound is mainly DEET, IR2535, picaridine, and some plant extract. Okay, so we need to think about uh, a next generation of repellent that is more effective than the one that we already have. Maybe something that specific to insect species if we want to use in the plantation. Uh, it has a high economic value. It is estimated that in two, 2027, the cost for the market value for insect repellent would be uh, six billion US dollar. So, so how how can we develop a new insect repellent? Well, basically, we we have to understand how the insect perceive the chemical. That's why uh, uh, molecular basis of insect chemoreception is one of the most active research area in the field of insect science. The key research area include identify key receptors that insect use. So we can use a technique like genome and transcriptome. Uh, also, we can study lichen and receptor relationships to understand which receptor is used uh, for to detect which lichen. And, and if we have the understand about this, we can develop new insect repellents. Okay, so I want to show you the the structure that is used for chemoreception. So in mosquito, the main chemosensory organ is the antenna and the mouth part. If we, if we look closer on the surface of the antenna or the mouth part, you can see a, a tiny sensor hair. And this sensor hair have olfactory receptor neuron inside. So this neuron, uh, the dendrite of this neuron have receptor. So if odorant molecules, uh, go inside the sensor and bind to the receptor, it send a signal to the brain so that the, the insect know the, the presence of the chemicals. So let's look closer uh, 
on the key proteins that involve in insect chemoreception. Let's start with odorant receptors, this one, which is the main topic today. So there are protein on the cell membrane. This is the membrane of the, the neuron. Okay, so once the odorant molecules, which is very diverse, more than a million chemicals can activate our sensory system. They mostly are uh, hydrophobic molecules. So when they get inside the sensor lung, they have to go past the, the lymph. So that special protein called odorant binding protein by them and bring it to the odorant receptor. Another class of odorant receptor is ionotropic receptor. This receptor uh, responds to a smaller set of chemicals, mostly acid and amine. And another one is gustatory receptor, which involve in test reception. They respond to carbon dioxide, sugars, and some bitter test tanks. So, so this is how the insect perceive the chemical. They need these this proteins. This, uh, three receptors are uh, like and get that ion channel. So that's how they activate the neuron. Okay, so let me tell you a bit more about insect odorant receptors. They were first identified in 1999 in a fruit fly, Drosophila melanogaster, when the genome is available. 20 years later, more than 10,000 receptors have been identified in more than 100 species of insects. So if you look at the structure, there are membrane proteins. They have seven transmembrane domains. So if you look here, this is the cell membrane and this is the receptor. This one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is a transmembrane domain. It has uh, N terminus inside cell and C terminus outside cell. So they actually two protein work together. The first one is ligand binding receptor. So they respond specifically to different ligand. Another one is a conserved co-receptor which form major part of the ion channel. So let me tell you a bit more about ligand binding receptors. They are highly divergent, which means a little similarity between amino acid of amino acid between the two proteins and uh, receptor from insect from different order, no homologous gene. Okay, uh, a number of genes per species is about sixty to four hundred up to after up to the species. Some receptor okay can respond uh, specifically to particular odorant molecules only, but some receptor can respond broadly to broadly set of chemicals. In the past, we, 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 we know about receptor that play important role in insect biology, including AGOR1, which is odorant receptor that female mosquito use to detect human sweat odor for methylphenol. And we know BMOR1, from bombic mori, the silk moth. This is the sex pheromone receptor that male, uh, male moth used to detect female sex pheromone bombico. Okay, in contrast, the conserved co receptor, okay, this subunit, this is highly conserved. I show you here is the protein alignment of all co protein from different species, different insect species, highly conserved, particularly at the end. Uh, in terminus, uh, it expressed in many neurons, almost every olfactory receptor neuron, and mutant of this gene uh, lead to uh, insensitivity to odorant molecules. Th th this protein is uh, an important target to develop a new insect repellent. Okay, now you know about odorant receptor. I am going to tell you how we can identify it, okay? Basically, we need genome or transcriptome data and we can use bioinformatic tools such as blood search. A very simple, simple tool to, to search for similar protein sequence from the genome, okay? But due to its high divergence, we, you still have to use human eyes to manually inspect them and identify correct exon and intron pattern in the gene and give the correct gene model. 
in the past, I have identified chemoreceptors from uh, some pest species, including brown plant hopper, cabbage, moth, Colorado potato beetle, red flower beetle, and red palm vivid. So we, we can simply use the blood search to, to identify the gene. Okay, let me tell you a bit more about how we can study its function. Today, there are two major, two main methods to study this. The first one is empty neuron system. So if you want to test the function of the receptor that you are interested, uh, you have to create a trans transgenic fruit fly, okay, that express your receptors in the, in the sensilla so that you can measure the activity when that sensilla exposed to to the chemicals, okay. Another one is Sinopas OOSI recording. So you basically isolate the OOSI from the female frog, and then you inject mRNA, that code for the receptor that you are interested. So, and then they translate them into protein. And so basically you create, uh, you mimic the olfactory receptor neuron using egg, using OOSI from the frog, and then you export them with uh, chemical and then you can test electrophysiological response. So these two techniques has been used to, to identify uh, lichen and receptor relationships in, the, in this field. So I want to talk about uh, the recent breakthrough in the field. Okay, so for the first time after 20 years, we now know the 3D structure of the insect odorant receptor. So Ruda Lab from the Rockefeller University have a report, have used a cryo electron microscopy to study 3D structure of the insect odorant receptor. So in 2018, they first published this structure in Nature Journal. Uh, this is the structure of orco protein. They are actually uh, homo tetramer. So four protein come to work together as the, uh, the odorant receptor. So if you look here, there are four color, right? It represents one subunit. This is the cell membrane. This is transmembrane region. And this is intracellular loop, okay? This is the side view. This is the top view. If you look closer into each subunit, Remember I told you there are seven transmembrane protein. You can see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. N terminate inside cell, C terminate inside out, outside cell. So when they come together, the seven transmembrane domain face inward, okay? And form pore for ion channel, for, for ion flow. And the intracellular loop here, called anchor domain is where the, each subunit bind loosely to each other. So this, okay. And on top view, each subunit has a binding pocket on the top, right? So chemical can bind to this pocket. And, and this is how, how they form the, the ion, ion flow pathway, okay? This is outside, this is inside, so ion can go in and out through this pathway, okay? So earlier this year, the same team published in Nature again, the 3D structure of the ligand binding receptors. So they used receptor from the Bristol tail, okay? Uh, this insect uh, has only five receptor, but one, each receptor can respond to many chem chemicals. So they want to know what it looked like uh, the 3D structure, what it look like. So they can respond to chemicals such as Eugeno and also DEET. Okay. So this is the structure, it's very similar to alcohol protein. There are four subunits, okay. The seven transmembrane domain form uh, face inward and form the ion flow, okay, ion, ion pathway. And there is binding pocket on the top, okay. And moreover, they also show the, the structure of the ligand binding receptor in the normal stage and when it is uh, binding to the odorant, okay? So they test with Eugeno chemicals. So in the normal stage, the pore close and 
when it by to the ligand, the pore open, which allow ion to flow into the receptor uh, neuron. Okay, so, uh, so, okay, they haven't yet show the, the real structure. So we, because we know it is a, a combination of ligand binding and all coprotein. So right now we, we, we assume that maybe insect odorant receptor have four subunits. Two, two are ligand binding receptor and the two are all coprotein, okay? And because, it, because in the cytoplasmic domain, uh, in the transmembrane domain, they do not interact with each other. That explains why the protein is so diverse because they do not have specific function, okay? In contrast, the seven transmembrane domain and anchor domain, uh, seven transmembrane has to form the, the ion channel and the anchor domain play roles in uh, binding each subunit. They have more degree of amino acid sequence uh, conservation. Okay, so this is very important study because now we know what it looked like in real life and we can learn how, how we learn and decide a better insect repellent from a better vision of their real structure. Okay, uh, now let me tell you, okay, how we can use this knowledge to fight mosquito and some insect pests. Okay, basically we have to translate the knowledge about mole its molecular basis of chemoreception to develop new repellent. So it is a good idea to understand uh, how our current one function, right? So I like to talk about DEET, D-E-E-T. It is the most widely used insect repellent. It was developed 70 years ago by USDA used prime first for US Army, okay? It's most widely used because it is low cost, uh, has broad spectrum, so it can uh, repel, protect us from many insect species and include some other pot like thick and long lasting effect at a couple hours maybe, but we still need to reapply them, right? and it has good toxicological profile, so it's quite safe for ourselves. However, the down point about DEET is that it has short distance effect, okay? And it has some unpleasant odors, and it dissolves plastic. And in fact, it is not the most effective one in the market. Other rep repellent uh, perform better against mosquitoes. So we still need to find a better one, than a better repellent. But let's start by understand how did it work in insect, okay? In two, 2008, 2008, a team of team diesel, so from Lucky Feller, they said they show that did target aquaprotein, is inhibit the function of aquaproteins. So basically, when we apply did on ourselves, uh, and the mosquito come close to us, we, uh, we stop them to, we stop their sense of smell so they cannot see us, okay? That's how it works based on this study. And later, the same team in 2013 showed that mutant fruit fly that do not have alcohol protein show less sensitivity to deed. They show it behavioral essay. However, in 2010, Lee, and team show that did target another class of receptor, the test receptor, gasaturi receptor, and suppress feeding behavior of the fly. So now we know maybe did do not only target orco, it's also target gasaturi receptor. Later, so in 2014, they show that actually did also target ligand binding receptors. So they study in Culex mosquito, there is this, the receptor called CQOR136 and, and the mutant of this receptor show less respond to DEET and this receptor respond to methyl jasmonate, which is a uh, chemicals that plant use in, in their defense and is strongly 
illicit uh, avoidance behavior. So Sue showed differently. So Sue said, these actually smell bad for, for the mosquito, so that they, for, the, for the mosquito, so they do not come to us. Okay, so that's different from this cell. Later in 2019, another team showed that well, actually did and other widely used repellent IR3535 and picaridine, it do not actually activate a factory receptor neuron in another malaria mosquito, Anopheles colossi. It actually interacts with the chemicals on our skin and prevent them to, to reach the neuron of the mosquito. So basically, from this study, did alter our chemical signature. So maybe it confused the mosquito. That's why they don't uh, come and try to buy us, okay? However, the natural repellent, for example, uh, Raymond Glass or Eugene, it actually uh, activates some olfactory receptor neuron. So they have different mechanisms, okay? So in conclusion for the, how did it work? Well, basically we now know did target different class of proteins. Their mode of action remain controversial. We don't know exactly yet. So, and it can have different insect effect on different insects, okay? But what we can learn from this is that uh, maybe the new insect repellent should be some chemical that can target different class of receptors. Also, we can use more than one active ingredient in our repellent so that they can have this effect. Okay, let's talk about how we can screen for the new insect repellent. The first one is using high throughput screening. Okay, a team from Vanderbilt University in USA, uh, they use the drug discovery facility in their university to screen for chemicals that can activate a complex uh, odorant receptors from mosquito. Okay, so they express the protein, they express the gene in the hex cell, which is human embryonic kidney cells. So this cell uh, produce the insect receptor. And then they test with, so that this machine uh, release different chemicals. More than 100,000 chemicals were, were tested. And only one, VUAA1, has the strongest effect. So it activates aqua protein, okay? And it has been shown behavioral, in behavioral essay that it is 100,000 times stronger than DEET. So basically we need less concentration of VUAA1 to have the same effect as DEET, okay? And they are investigating some analog of VUAA1, some chemical that have similar structure to VUAA1. And the result is quite promising. Some of them even have a stronger effect on the alco protein. Okay, uh, this technique though has a limitation because this platform is developed, was developed for drug discovery. So most chemical here is not a volatile chemical. Okay, so basically in this test, there are a lot more chemicals that can be repellent and is missing in this study. So this, this is the limitation of this technique. Another method, okay, they use chemical informatics, machine learning, artificial intelligence, try, use, try to use this technique to screen chemicals. So I'd like to, to talk about this study in 2019 from Kepchia, okay? They test activity of HT compounds against anophilus or protein. So they did do it experimentally using empty neuron system. Then they get the results. So they use the result for training the machine learning mod model. Okay, so this model now can separate between the chemical that can activate alcohol and the chemical that cannot activate alcohol. Then they use uh, in silico screening, they use that model to screen more than thousand chemicals and they get a, a subset of chemical that presumably have th that function. So they validate this function using different methods. 
electroantonogram, empty neuron system, and also behavioral assay. They identified two chemicals, BMP and LF, that have repellent activity. So, so basically, they, are, they use different methods to, to identify new insect repellent. OK, so that's how we translate the molecular basis of insect chemo reception into development of new insect repellents. OK, then that's how we find mosquito. Okay. Uh, let me tell you a bit more about my current work. OK, I, I'm studying chemo reception of this mos mosquito, Mansonia mosquito. They are endemic in Thailand. We have six species in, in Thailand. They are vector for Brugia malaya nematode, okay, which cause lymphatic filariasis or elephant legs. Okay, and it's still a problem in southern Thailand, particularly in Naratiwat province, and it's also a problem in Malaysia and Indonesia. Okay. And it's uh, neglected tropical disease is happening in the poor countries, so nobody studied them. Not many people study them. So in this mosquito, Mansonia mosquito, no one have studied that genetics before. So that's the purpose of this work: try to understand their genetics and identify chemo receptors. This work, I, I work with uh, Professor Tirapa Charan Viriyapa from Kasesa University, and I have work with two students, they already graduated, Supicha Anandpasad and Sorovit Chairat. This study was funded by Thailand Research Fund. The aim is to identify key proteins that they use in chemo reception and try to understand the conservation of genes across mosquito species so that we know which receptor is important for their biology. And then we can choose them as a candidate for development of the new repellent. So in this method, I collect mosquito from Prutodang Naratiwat. Uh, it is uh, the largest peat swamp forest in Thailand, okay, which is an ideal habitat of these mosquitoes. And I do RNA sequencing. I, I, I extract RNA from the head and the body part separately. The reason why we do this because we want to have as many head as possible because uh, genes, chemoreceptor genes express at very low level. So we try to increase the amount of RNA from that genes. And we use Illumina high seq platform and we do de novo assembly. Uh, I use blast to go to identify uh, an entire set of genes, not just chemoreceptor genes. But for the chemoreceptor, I do it manually to identify uh, smell receptor, test receptor, and odorant binding proteins. And I perform phylogenetic analysis to identify some autologous genes so that I can predict the function. So here is the result. We successfully identify uh, chemoreceptor genes. Okay. And then when we construct phylogenetic relationships, we can identify some conserved receptor and we can predict function. It's their function in Mansonia. For odorant receptor, uh, we identify ochroprotein, the ion channel co receptor. We identify autolog of OR1, the, the one that mosquito used to detect human sweat odor, and also OR4, same, the human odor receptor and we find autolog of OR2 and OR10, which is indo and saccato receptor. It's essential for female mosquito to, to detect egg laying site. So this chemical produced by bacteria. So it's common in where they can lay the eggs. For the gas saturated receptors, we identify uh, carbon dioxide receptors and sugar receptors and other bitter receptors. For ionotropic receptor, we also identify receptor that, is, that has been reported to that important for mosquito to detect human odors. So we believe that we have identified key proteins that is important for Mansonia mosquito to find the human host. So uh, we map the genes in this hypothetical model how the mosquito uh, find the human host. 
So the first one, okay, to search for the human host, they their carbon dioxide receptor must be activated. So they know that something breathing somewhere and they can try to find them. So we find uh, three carbon dioxide receptor in Mansonia. Okay. So if the carbon dioxide receptor are activated, the ionotropic receptor IR8A has to, is another checkpoint. If it is activated, okay, they know that there's some animal there, which is the lactic acid is common in animal. Okay. Then the odorant receptor like ORCO, OR1 and OR4 that detect human sweat can separate between uh, adult, uh, uh, human host and animal host, okay? So that they can choose their host, okay? And they have to check other class uh, thermoreceptor. If the temperature is about 36 degree, which is a normal temperature of live human, they, they know, okay, this is their human host, so they can go there and bite. Okay, so basically we, we map the key genes into to the hypothetical model to explain how Mansonian mosquito fight the human host. Okay, that's, that's the work that have been done on Mansonia project. Another work that I like to share today is the, uh, how we can fight the insect pest, agricultural pest. So I said the red palm review, Rhinchophorus ferruginous, it looked like this. So there, there are serious pests in Asia. If you look at the map, okay, they destroy oil palm, coconut, and dead. Okay, so in Middle East, they, this beetle destroyed the dead production. We still need a better way to control them. Currently, we use pheromone bed to attract the beetles and kill them. We also use uh, pheromone confused scent. Uh, which means we release a lot of pheromones to confuse them so they cannot find the actual mate. Okay. And we need a way to early for the early detection of this beetle in, in the in the farms. There are so many people involved in this project. I started this project seven years ago when I was a PhD student. So I work with my advisor, Professor Jutama Satasu, okay. I also work with uh, Professor Hugh Robertson and Kim O'Warden from University of Illinois, USA. They helped me do sequencing and transcriptome assembly. So when I become a lecturer, my students that time, Sili On Son Tong, Yuki Anasawa helped me identify chemoreceptor genes. And, and, and later, another student, Kantinamad Malipon, also work on the transcriptome and she visit uh, Professor Iwao lab in Germany to, to work on this project. So many people help this project. This study was funded by University, uh, Prince of Songkhai University. So the aim of, of this project is to first identify gustatory receptor, which is the test receptor. You may not know, although it is a serious pest in Thailand, we breed them as food. The larvae can be sold as food. I've never tried them. I should do, but never tried them for many years. <laughs> never have, never ever tried them. Should do though. Uh, so that if we understand that uh, the test receptor, we might be able to. Uh, make a better food for them that they like so that they can grow faster. Okay, that's why I study gustatory receptor. Another aim is to identify candidate pheromone receptor. We know they have pheromone, but we don't know what is the receptor. So there are three types of pheromone. The first one is aggregation pheromone. This pheromone is produced by male, okay? and used to attract both male and female. So we think both male and female should have this receptor and it should express at high level so that because this chemical is important for them. Another pheromone is male produces sex pheromone. Okay, the yellow here. So we hypothesis that the female will have 
the receptor for this chemical, and it should be upregulated in female because female need need it, right? The female also produce sex pheromone that attract male beetle. Again, we assume we have make a hypothesis that the male beetle should have this receptor and it is, should be upregulated in the male beetle. Okay, this is the method for the cluster to really set the gene. I, I annotate the gene from the genome. The genome of this beetle it was available last year. Okay, so that provided the material for the annotation. For the candidate pheromone receptor, again, I use RNA sequencing method technique. Okay, so I isolate RNA from four samples the first, the male antenna, female antenna male mouth part and female mouth part, trying to understand the differential expression of gene in these four samples. I use uh, Illumina sequencing platforms. Uh, so after I get the read, I pull them and make one single transcriptome. And I use this transcriptome to identify odorant receptor, gustatory receptor, and odorant binding proteins. And then I estimate, estimate expression of this gene in each library. And then I test uh, differential gene expression analysis to find, to compare, okay? In antenna, I compare male and female to see uh, different between sex. In mouth part, compare male and female. And I also compare male antenna and male mouth part to understand differential expression between the antenna and the mouth part, female antenna and female mouth part. For the first study, identify gustatory receptor genes I identify 50 genes, okay, encoding 65 functional gustatory receptor via the alternative splicing process. Seven of them are carbon dioxide receptor, which is the highest number compared to other beetles. Nine of them are sugar receptors, and 49 is the, are the beta receptors. The number of genes is quite similar between uh, Red palm beetle and the mountain pie beetles, but other beetles have a much larger number of genes, gustatory receptor genes. This work already published earlier this year. So from phylogenetic analysis, I can identify the putative function of red palm beetle gustatory receptors. Uh, we, we do not detect large expansion of genes that we normally observe in other species. So if you see here, the green, here is the uh, Colorado potato specific expansion gene, and this is tribulium, the red flower beetle specific, specific expansion gene, which explain why they have so many genes here, but we do not detect in the red palm beetle. So that's the first aim of this project. For the second aim, I okay, I I find that I, I find that uh, for the chemoreceptor genes, odorant binding protein is the most uh, is the expressed at the highest level. Okay, sixty odorant receptors are upregulated in the male antenna in the antenna. So which related to its function, right? And then I use for affection. And 11 gustatory receptors are upregulated in the mouth part, which related to taste function. Orco gene is the highest expression gene in both male and female antenna. And I have identified candidate pheromone receptor from its, expre its the expression pattern. The first one is aggregation pheromone, I find one candidate. It is the second highest expression gene in the male and female antenna, okay? Uh, for the male sex pheromone, sex pheromone, I get one candidate. It is upregulated in female mouth part. For the female sex pheromone, I get, I've got four candidates. Three is, three are upregulated in male antenna and one is upregulated in male mouth part, okay? Earlier this year, okay, Anthony et al. from Saudi Arabia, they have identified aggregation pheromone of the red palm beetle. Basically, they, they found what we're trying to do, okay? They found FOR1, okay? 
okay this receptor is uh up regulated in the beetle that have been exposed to the aggregation pheromone so they they make hypothesis that they should be aggregation pheromone receptor so they use empty neuron system to to see if they can really respond to pheromone component so the study showed that they specifically respond to uh, aggregation pheromone the blue and the orange here and they are also respond to chemical that have similar structure to the aggregation pheromone they also show that if they increase the amount of uh, aggregation pheromone in the test it also increase the response uh, of of the receptors so they propose that they can use this receptor in the development of their receptor based biosensor to detect the 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 beetle in their farms actually this uh, biosensor is technology is already available uh, people have used insect receptor to de development biosensor so good so they they can use they, they can apply their knowledge into that bio bit bio sensor so when i see the paper i test if my candidate aggregation pheromone is the same thing so i do protein alignment and you can see here it's 100 percent identity between the two proteins so basically uh, our assumption is correct although we're not the first to 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 show okay it's sad but good at the same way anyway i still have two receptors to identify so i have to confirm the differential expression between male and female first and if there's some good result maybe we can further process to functional analysis okay okay for the conclusion again okay, basically now the breakthrough in the field, we understand 3D structure of insect odorant receptor proteins that will help us un understand how lichen and receptor binding and it's good to develop new insect repellent. There are many approach to identify insect repellent. However, we have to start by identifying key receptors of the insects that is used in detection important chemicals. And lesson learned okay we the repellent should target different class of receptors and maybe a combination of many chemicals and new insect repellent uh, is being developed okay for example VUAA1 is analogs okay it might be available in the market in 10 years after this okay that is that could save our life from mosquitoes and and from other disease vectors. Okay, so this is possible because people in the field do basic research and try to understand insect uh, chemoreception. Thank you. Any questions from the audience? Thank you, Ajahn. Thank Ajahn, you. I have one question from Ajahn Lompung has posted here. So I will read that question to you. Okay. Okay. The question is, uh, can lemongrass repel mosquitoes? If yes, what is the bioactive compound? Can human receptor perceive it? Uh -huh. and, wha and why we respond to like, but mosquitoes dislike it? Okay. Okay. Uh, let me show you. Should I read the question once again? I uh, it's okay. I, I understand the question already. I'm trying to find uh, the picture. Okay. So, yes, the lemongrass extract can 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 activate insect receptor and it activate lichen binding receptor. They have specific receptor that respond to the chemicals in the lemongrass uh there's some essential oil i don't know some aromatic chemicals i don't know certain for, for sure which one okay but there are other chemical in the lemongrass as well like eugenol 
which also activate a specific receptor of the insect as well. Uh, we human can also smell the lemongrass odors. We have different class of receptor. We also have G protein couple uh, odorant receptors. So in evolution, we, we, we can detect them. We have receptor for them too, because in for us, that chemical could be a signal of food, right? Come from, come from fruit, something like that. So it's good for us. But for insects, I don't know for sure why, why this, they don't like it. I don't know for sure. It might be chemical that uh, present in the tox some toxic plant that some plant that toxic to them. So natural selection favor mosquito that avoid them. Okay. Am I answer all the question? Did I? Did I? Yes, Ajahn. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have one simple question, Ajahn. Like. Uh, you, you mentioned that VUAA1 analog is a new insect repellent. You just mentioned in the conclusion. Yeah, yeah. So uh, my question, yeah. It's being developed. Okay. Being developed, okay. Uh, they, is, they function better than did. So, okay, but they have to think about uh, how to use them in real life, how to mix them with, with some other stuff to make it available in, in the form sure. of insect repellent. Okay. And maybe they're trying to find the better one, not the VUA one. Some, okay. I don't know. They find a patent and maybe a secret too. So my question was like, how, how will this new insect repellent be better than the present, present existing insect repellent? How are the scientists trying to make new insect repellent better than the present existing insect repellent? Okay, so uh, for VUA1, let me show you. Okay. So, so that means we, we use a lower concentration of them. So we, don't, we do not need to use as many as the one that we already have. So that, that's something showing that they are more effective. Okay. And we are looking for something that can have a long, have last, have effect longer, like apply one a day or apply once a week. That we've been looking for something like that. Or we also looking for some chemicals that that's highly volatile so that mosquitoes stay 100 meters away from us, something like that. We've been looking for, for chemical that have that properties. So we, have, we still have to, to learn about that. But I, I believe this technique can be used. Computational method will help us uh, screen chemical which have the activity I mentioned earlier. That that will help. That answer. Any question. Uh, uh, just one question, Ajahn from yep. my side uh, so that is about the mosquitoes they tend to like uh, ad get adapted or we can say like they uh, get tolerate they can tolerate or have resistance to the repellents quite fast like we don't know in the market there are different types of repellents so like when we use different types of repellents even then uh, there are mosquitoes which can resist those repellents so like uh, is there any like sort of some genes or something in the mosquitoes which tend to like uh, show the resistance to these repellents and all? Or okay. can there be resistance to this uh, yeah. new uh, repellent as well? Okay. Uh, yes, if we think about DEET, okay? DEET actually target 
the the very conserved protein or coal. Okay, so it's quite hard for for the mosquito to develop resistant to these chemicals because if they have mutation in alcohol protein, they cannot sense the smell at all. So they be extinct. Okay. So so for this for this class of receptor like this that target very conserved one, it is harder to develop resistant to to the chemical. But in population, uh, researcher found some mosquitoes that uh, that have mutation in alcohol protein. They, they can still sense the smell, but they do not respond to deed. So you are right, they can develop resistant, but to which degree, easy or hard, okay? Um, for other chemicals, maybe different, uh, different methods involved why they do not respond to the repellent. For example, habituation, maybe the chemicals smell bad for them at first, like the, the signal of danger or something, but then they learn later that it's not actually dangerous to them, so they do not care anymore and they can, can still beat by us. So that, that another, another mechanism how, why they do not care about the repellent anymore. Uh, so you are right, same, same for the insecticide. Insect could find a way to, to, to become resistant to the repellent. So that we have to add that, add that into consideration too. Maybe target the very conserved receptor and Ajahn, one more question. Will the effect of this insecticide that has been developed and is going to be developed have equal effect on both male and female mosquitoes? Like, is there any comparison that has been made like where the effect of these uh, repellents is shown more either in male or female mosquitoes or will it be equal in both male and female mosquitoes? Because like, for example, if I know about malaria, we know that it is caused by female anophilus mosquitoes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So like when we develop this insect repellents, is there a comparative study made on the effect of these repellents on the, like, what can I say, like male and female mosquitoes? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I believe they, they did that too in, in, the, in the paper, compare the effect between male and female, yes. But and I can there be any specific reason? Because I guess both male and female mosquitoes will have the chemoreceptor, right, Ajahn? So what can... Uh, okay. Uh, I think most study focus on DEET so that they can that target alcohol protein that, fi, fi, that present in both male and female. But some receptor like uh, OR1, uh, which is the human sweat odorant receptor. It is uh, upregulated in female. So if they have the repellent that target this receptor, it might be different between, the effect might be different between male and female, but we don't have that yet. Did I answer that? Yes, I did. We don't have uh, so I think Did I answer uh, that? Uh, there is one more question. There is one more question, yeah, from Ajahn Kitika. So the question is, how can rep repellent repel mosquitoes? Okay. How can repellent repel mosquitoes? Okay, so there are different possible scenario. The first one is to inhibit the sense of smell. So when we come close to us, we become invisible to them because we stop their sense of smell. That's what this sense found. Or maybe repellent smell bad to them. Okay, so they, 
the preplan can activate some neuron that send the signal to the brain, the insect brain that there's some bad chemical here. Let's move away. That's what Sue found. And lastly, recently, uh, maybe the, the repellent alter our chemical profile. So we smell different, we smell weird, we smell, our smell change. So the, bit, uh, the mosquito do not find us attractive and they do not bite us. And, okay, so many ways to, to mode. There are more than one mode of action of the repellent. Depend. Okay. But uh, in Thailand, we try to develop repellent from plant extract, like right? from lemongrass oil, eucalyptus oil, something that that chemical activate uh, neuron of the the mosquitoes. The the that they perceive this chemical as the, something bad, dangerous chemical. That's why they avoid us. We, we become bad plant for them, so they avoid us. Okay. okay. Thank you, Ajahn, for all the answers. Thank so you. since there are no more questions, uh, now I would like to request uh, Miss again for a vote of thanks. Uh, okay, so thank you very much, Ma'am Goma. Uh, Thank you very much, Ajahn Dr. Patamere, for giving us a very wonderful and informative seminar and giving us your valuable time in giving us this presentation and answering to all our questions. Uh, I guess this uh, research which you have been doing and uh, will be helpful not only to us, but will also be helpful to the researchers who will be working uh, on a related topic in future as well. Next, I would like to thank Ajahn Dr. Pim Shanok for coordinating this seminar and giving us the opportunity to uh, attend such informative uh, seminar. And lastly, I would like to thank Mr. Piawat for providing us with all the necessary technical support uh, without which the seminar would be impossible. So these are the three main people I would like to thank. Again, I would like to thank Ajahn Patamerik for giving us your valuable time in presenting this seminar to us, which is very informative and very important. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Ajahn. I can leave now, right? Yes, yes. Ajahn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thank you, Ajahn. Bye-bye. Bye, Ajahn. Bye, Ajahn.